Welcome to the Homeschool Mama Self-Care Podcast. I'm Teresa Wiedrich, the Homeschool Life Coach at CapturingTheCharmedLife.com. I'm dedicating this season, Season 4 of the Homeschool Mama Self-Care Podcast, to the overwhelmed homeschool mama. Because homeschool mamas would rather be clear, confident, and satisfied in their homeschools. And since the story of overwhelm is why I wrote the book, I started a podcast, I began coaching, I'm offering this podcast series to the overwhelmed homeschool mom. How do you know that you're an overwhelmed homeschool mom? I think that word overwhelmed means a lot of things to a lot of different people. But I'll ask you seven questions and you tell me if this is you. Is your homeschool experience a daily challenge? Are you not showing up as you'd like to? Do you feel like what you're doing isn't good enough? Do you suspect your unrealistic expectations are getting in your way? Do you feel like you're losing yourself, losing your sense of self and your identity in your homeschool? Do you have a sense that you don't have a solid sense of who your kids are or what they need? And do you feel unsupported in your homeschool choice? If you identify with any of these seven ways that you might be an overwhelmed homeschool mama, then this podcast series is for you. Hey, if we haven't met, I would like to introduce myself. So I'm Teresa. I've been homeschooling my four kids age 13 to 21 for quite some time now, long enough for me to forget how many years exactly it is. Before I homeschooled, I graduated from a Bachelor of Science in Nursing program. Then I began working in the perinatal float pool at a hospital in Ontario, Canada, till my first daughter joined us. I discovered homeschooling on a lark. In fact, at that point, I had three little girls. I happened to be on a vacation. My husband said, why don't you go out and spend the afternoon quietly doing whatever you want to do for an hour or two, which, as you can imagine, didn't happen very often. And in that bookstore on that afternoon, I picked up a book called The Homeschool Option by Lisa Rivera. I picked up that book for the purpose of gathering my ideas against homeschooling because it seemed to me everyone around me was homeschooling and I wanted to know why homeschooling wasn't an option. So it turns out by the end of that week, I'd read the book and my life changed. Two years later, we were moving to a new province. I was having a fourth baby and we were homeschooling. That book certainly changed the trajectory of our life, but ultimately homeschooling brought a whole lot of freedom. Personally, in our family, in how we approached our lives, certainly our children's educations. Seven of those homeschool years, we traveled about half time. We went all over the place, along with my husband's work. He's a medical physician. So we would do locums all the way up to the Arctic. We went into Africa, East and West Africa at different times. We traveled pleasure traveling into Italy, into Chicago, into Jamaica. The kids remember Jamaica as the last really big uh, vacation that we've had together. We've been all over the place, never in the tourist season. We decided to put down roots and we planned and built a homestead on raw land in the Kootenai Mountains. We built a house, we built a chicken coop, a goat barn, a fruit orchard, a garden, all the things. One summer we even had or hosted a bed and breakfast. I wrote a book, Homeschool Mama Self-Care, Nurturing the Nurturer. It was one of four books that I intended to write that summer. I started podcasting so I could connect with other homeschool people and discuss concepts around homeschooling and self-care. And I began formally coaching, either one-on-one coaching sessions or in the context of overwhelm or group coaching sessions for overwhelm, for building boundaries, for reimagining your homeschool and de-schooling. All the things that I do now are undergirded by my values, that I show up authentically in my life and encourage others to show up authentically too, to be transparent and vulnerable when it's useful, 
for relationship and building up others around me. And I value a willingness to always be in a growth space. So that's who I am, and I love getting to know you too. You can book a consultation with me, which you'll find on the first page of my website, www.capturingthecharmlife.com. I couldn't create a podcast season about overwhelm in the homeschool if I didn't experience overwhelm myself. By my, by my third year homeschooling, I wanted the yellow bus to stop in front of my house and let my kids get on it. I sound like I'm joking, but actually it was true. Many times I've experienced overwhelm since, and I certainly had it before, but there was a very marked moment for me on a January, a slump month, the third or fourth year into my homeschooling, where I really, truly felt done. I was overwhelmed. Here's what I was overwhelmed by. I wanted a clean house, didn't have it. I wanted my private school curriculum to work for my homeschool kids. And I wanted to do it between 8 and 4 p.m. And I wanted to use the curriculum, the sunlight curriculum that I had, and I wanted to use all of it. And I wanted to finish it before the year ended. I wanted to use all the cool things that the neighbor's kids did at school or other homeschool families did in their homeschools. I assumed that there was one right way to homeschool, and I was the one doing it. Or at least I was going to die trying. I was looking for the perfect method to homeschool. I liked The Well-Trained Mind by Susan Wise Bauer. I read it thoroughly every year, and I was trying to enact it all. And when I found out Charlotte Mason was kind of cool, I tried to include her too. Thank goodness I met John Holt and John Taylor Gatto. I was trying to keep kids happy. I was trying to make three square meals a day. I didn't feel supported. I didn't have a solid homeschool community. I didn't have a plan for the complaining, bickering, and fighting. I didn't have a plan for my own emotional triggers. (laughs) Not even close. If you call reactivity emotional plan, then check, check. I had that. I had not even the foggiest clue what I might have needed, but I was always trying to give, 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 even though I had no idea what my needs were. I had no time to be alone or quiet, no opportunity to learn myself, no creative time, no downtime. I had no plan to burn off stress or tension, aka exercise or meditation. I felt bad about myself because I wasn't always showing up the way that I wanted to. I was wildly unrealistic about the numbers of things that I could do in a day. I was dissatisfied in my closest relationships and didn't have a plan for that either. I definitely didn't have strong boundaries. And even though I was homeschooling, I didn't feel like I was spending enough time with my kids eyeball to eyeball. I didn't have a clear homeschool vision that actually aligned with my real homeschooled kids. And I definitely thought more was more when it came to curriculum or extracurriculars or one more book to read in our read-alouds. So you can see I had a few reasons to feel overwhelmed in my homeschool. One of my goals as a homeschool life coach is to help you address your overwhelm. And that has come from sheer experience from me and also a lot of therapy, a lot of coaching, and a whole lot of practice of the tools and strategies that I'm going to share with you over the course of this season. There's also a whole bunch of people I get to interview and connect with to learn about how we can approach our families and our lives in ways that actually help us to unpack the overwhelm. I could share a whole lot of tools and strategies to address overwhelm, but I'm going to share with you five that I use on a regular basis. The first is breathing. Once upon a time, when someone introduced me to breathing, I thought, for reals, I'm breathing all the time. No one needs to help me breathe. If I'm not breathing, I'm dead. But I've learned that intentional breathing 
helps to slow all the physiological mechanisms in our body, and therefore we're likely to feel less angry, anxious, depressed, all the big emotions. So periodically throughout my day, I check in with myself and ask myself, what does it feel like in my body? Where does it feel tight? Allow myself to breathe into those spaces. Sometimes when I'm feeling angry or anxious or sad, I will intentionally slow down my breathing, find it deep in my gut, breathe in for five beats, hold for five beats, exhale for five beats, hold quietly for five beats again, and do that three times. I'll also, before I even get up in the morning, add meditation to that breathing work. And I'll do it if I wake up in the middle of the night too. So one of the things I do to address overwhelm is breathe. Breathe on purpose. The second thing that I do is include mindful moments. When you connect with me, you will always hear me say, grab your device and put in that device a self-awareness moment in your day. Choose one of the most challenging moments in your day, a typical time where you feel stressed or anxious or angry, say 11 a.m. every day or arsenic hour, that hour after dinner. Put an alarm on so that when that alarm goes off, you can take a deep breath Ask yourself, how am I feeling? What is the thought that I'm thinking? What's the story that I'm telling myself? Because we're always telling ourselves stories. These self-awareness moments help us get clearer on why we're feeling what we're feeling. Creating a little bit of distance between what we're experiencing and allowing ourselves to just be. The third thing that I do is... I'll call it a self-compassionate mirror moment. Okay, so picture yourself really exasperated. Your child hasn't done dot, 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 or you have kids fighting, or six things happened before you tried to get out of the house and everyone is having a challenging day. One of those days when you are ready to blow off steam in the most unhealthy way had a few of those. I've had many of those. So I head over to that mirror and I look in that mirror and I say to myself, Hey, how are you doing? And if I'm especially frustrated, sad, hurt, offended, whatever you fill in the blank, I'm looking at another person's face that looks sad and overwhelmed. And what do I want to do when I see a sad, overwhelmed face? Say, I'm sorry. I'm sorry you're feeling that way. It's been a rough day. I see you. I see all that you're trying to do. I see that you're trying to do right by your kids. I see that you're trying to do all these things for them. I see the conflict that's happening. And as though I am my own friend, I can say to myself, put your hand on your heart. Feel a hug from me. I care about you. I see you. That right there, though it sound hella weird, and I know it does, it really works. Try it. We're going to talk about a whole bunch more self-compassionate techniques at the Homeschool Mama Book Club on August 18th, because we're going to discuss Kristen Neff's book, Self-Compassion. The fourth thing that I do a habit that I use to address my overwhelm is journal. I'm going to have a special episode entirely dedicated to journaling in this season on homeschool overwhelm because it is near and dear to my heart. I started when I was seven. It was the very first thing I ever purchased is a little lock green journal from Zellers. That journaling practice has helped me process so many things so many things. I have created so many journals for you too. 
on my resource page on my website, Capturing the Charmed Life. This past year, I have created a Build Your Boundaries journaling workbook, Reimagine Your Homeschool journaling workbook, a de-school your homeschool journaling workbook, Overcoming Overwhelm journaling workbook, and the Big Emotions toolbox. And of course, a daily journal for homeschool mamas. So you can see, I love me a journal. Journals help us explore what's really going on in there. Writing out our thoughts helps us to clarify what's really going on. Do you know what also helps? Speaking it to someone. So many times I have had conversations with another homeschool mom who has said something like, I can't believe what I just said. Now that I said what I said, I get it. I'm being really, I'm being unrealistic with myself, or I'm being super unkind with myself, or you fill in the blank. And the fifth habit that I have built into my homeschool, into my life is to time block. Time blocking, actually writing down everything that I do in the day. Okay, for the one week that I wrote down everything that I did in the day, it was extra overwhelming because I don't have time for that. But what I discovered was that I was wildly unrealistic about what I thought I could do. So this tactic, this strategy, time blocking, helps to address unrealistic expectations. How much time do you have and how much time can you actually use to do all the things that you want to do? So those are the five habits that have helped me address overwhelm in my homeschool and life. Our goal in addressing overwhelm will be threefold. It'll be to address your needs because sometimes a homeschool mama is not addressing her needs, not even aware she has them. We're going to address your relationships and address your homeschool vision. So let's get clear on what we need clarify and instill strategies to address those relational challenges, and build a homeschool vision for your real homeschool family. Sometimes when I'm chatting with somebody on Instagram or Facebook, and I'm in the DMs, and I'm introducing myself and saying, hey, this is who I am, you connected on this account, and I just want you to feel welcome here and let me know how I can support you. I ask them to share a little bit about them. And they're always surprised at my kind of straight up, real, trying to genuinely connect with another human being approach. I like keeping it real. (laughs) Like I said in the beginning of this podcast episode, I value authenticity and vulnerability when it fits. In that spirit, I want to share five things about me. And I hope that you will share five things about you over at the Patreon support chat Once a month, we meet in the Homeschool Mama Self-Care Patreon support chat, and that is a place for us to genuinely connect and support each other. Okay, so here are five things that I have not shared, I don't think I've shared, about me. The first is that nature therapy is mine all day long. Before 7 a.m. and by 9 p.m. and numerous times throughout the day, I am feeding and watering my three goats. I'm gathering chicken's eggs in Cluckingham Palace. And I'm doing guard rounds with my great peer sidekick, Violet. The second thing about me is that my house really isn't always clean. Even as I speak to homeschool mamas like you, homeschool moms that are declaring their irritation about their disorderly homes, I have occasional hay and giant dog hair on the mudroom floor, or dishes in the sink, or on the counter, or in kids' bedrooms, of course. And I don't do my kids' laundry, so there is a whole lot of laundry in the laundry room, sometimes unfolded, sometimes in the dryer, sometimes in the washer for days, sometimes on the floor, and definitely piles and piles of it in their closets. The third thing that I'd share with you about me is that I almost never eat peanut butter and bananas because my husband consumes the lion's share of that in our house. I prefer green smoothies for breakfast. 
The fourth thing I share about me is that I don't go a day without lint, sea salt, dark chocolate. Okay, like every once in a while I do, but those are really dark, lean days. And I also read at least a chapter of a book each day. There is a reason I started the Homeschool Mama book club. And the fifth thing that I want to share about me is that one of my very, very, very favorite things to do in the world is to sit with homeschool moms like you to help you unpack your challenges, to acknowledge your uniqueness and your purpose. I love inviting you to share your tough, uncomfortable stories so that I can strategically listen and help you get clear on how to address those challenges. Because if you knew me before I wrote the book, Homeschool Mama Self-Care, Nurturing the Nurturer, before I started podcasting, and before I officially started life coaching, you'll know I was already doing it. And I know it's my unique reason for me to be in the world. I love sitting down to chat with you. So if you want to connect with me, you can do that. You can schedule that consultation. You'll find it on the first page of my website. But I would really love to hear five things about you that I might not know. And last thought, we are gearing up for the upcoming homeschool year. Some of us might have started already or just beginning. And certainly most of us will have begun a formal homeschool year if we are not on schoolers by the middle of September. And I know how exciting that is to have your homeschool room or your kitchen table, have a stack of new read-alouds or new markers or new Professor Noggins games or all the things that you think are most important for your homeschool. You put a whole lot of work in that. I know you. I see you. You put so much effort into doing right by your kids. You, girlfriend, are good enough. You are your child's greatest advocate, and you care more than anyone else in the world. If you don't hear it from your kids, and you probably won't, I want to say I see you, and I appreciate all that you do for you and your homeschool kids. You're going to have a great homeschool year. I'd love to hear your thoughts on any of the things we chatted about today, so head over to CapturingTheCharmLife.com. I hope you and your kids can turn your homeschool challenges into your homeschool charms because you're going to transform your homeschool overwhelm to homeschool confidence, clarity, and vision. You've got this, girlfriend. <laughs>